Hi, I'm Karen Bluth, and I'm from the Department of Psychiatry here at UNC. I'm a mindfulness and self-compassion practitioner and teacher, as well as a researcher. Uh, I work mostly with um, teens, but also some with adults in my research. Um, and I want to talk today about uh, mind wandering. So um, if you've done any mindfulness practice at all, I'm sure that you have noticed that your mind wanders. I remember the first time that um, I, when I first started practicing and I was on my first retreat and I met with the instructor, the, um, the meditation instructor, and the meditation instructor asked me uh, how, my, how it was going. And I was surprised that I said, my mind wanders you know, after two breaths. And she looked at me and she said, oh, you made it to two breaths? <laughs> so our minds wander all the time um, for a number of different reasons. Um, sometimes just for entertainment, you know, we're bored, you know, it's not fun just sitting here. Let's look for something a little more interesting or exciting. Um, but it also wanders to protect us, to look for things that can harm us. Um, or our danger to us in some way. And um, so it's a survival mechanism. Our minds wander to keep a lookout for anything that can hurt us. And what our minds tend to do is go to the past and think about you know, things maybe that we said that we shouldn't have said or things that we regret saying and you know, we can worry about those things. Or our mind goes to the future and thinks about what ifs? What if I am exposed to COVID, you know, and I bring it home? What if somebody in my family is exposed to COVID? What if that difficult conversation that I had with my coworker gets back to my boss and my job is threatened because of it? So our minds wander to all these places because um, it, it wants to start solving or addressing a potential problem, okay? So um, although this is a survival mechanism, we are wired for survival, we are not wired for happiness. So it's a survival me mechanism for our minds to wander but it doesn't serve our well-being. And our well-being, meaning less anxiety, less depression, less stress, is served by our minds being in the present moment. So this is what mindfulness practice is about. It's about cultivating um, this habit of bringing our attention to the present moment. And so we do this through a number of different means. Usually we have an anchor, which can be the breath, which can be sounds in the room, which can be physical sensations. And this helps us to bring our attention to the present moment. So in this practice, which we'll be doing, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the anchor of paying attention to sounds in the room and also to our breath. So we'll be doing both. So if you're ready, if you can get into a comfortable position, if you're not already, and if you're comfortable closing your eyes, you can close your eyes. If not, it's totally fine to keep them partway open. And check in with your shoulders and make sure that they're relaxed, dropped away from your ears. Feet flat on the floor. Mine aren't. So we put them flat on the floor. And the top of your head should be parallel with the ceiling. 
your chin slightly tucked, if that's comfortable for you. What that does is it opens your airways. So you get the maximum um, air, amount of air in your airways. So you can play with it. If you tilt your chin up, your airways close a little bit. Tilt your chin down, that also constricts your airways a little. Just see if you can find that sweet spot. And bring your attention to sounds. Sounds in the room, close by. You may notice one particular sound that's stronger or louder than the others. See what you can notice. sounds that are further away. And again, if you notice your mind wandering, simply direct your attention back to listening to the sounds. And remember that our minds wander naturally, so no need to judge yourself for your mind wandering. It's just what our minds do. Nothing to do, no place to go, just listening. And now shifting our attention to our breath. Noticing your breath in the place where it's most obvious to you. Well, this might be at the tip of your nose as you're breathing in. Might be in your nostrils where you feel the cool air passing through. might be in the gentle rising and falling of your chest with each breath. or might be in the movement of your diaphragm area. Moves a little bit with each breath. So not trying to control your breath in any way, just letting your breath do what it does. You're doing this your whole life. Just letting your body breathe.
feeling your breath in the very beginning of your inhale, through your inhale, to the very end of your exhale. Even noticing that still quiet place where your in-breath turns into your out-breath. And the still quiet place at the end of your out-breath before the next in-breath begins. Just one breath. Just one breath at a time. And then the next breath. Your whole job right now is simply to feel your breath. You have no other responsibilities for this moment, this brief time. And simply coming back to your breath each time you notice your mind has wandered. And for the last 20 seconds or so of this practice, just simply feeling your breath, nothing else. And whenever you feel ready, you can gently open your eyes. They've been closed. As though this was mindful breathing and mindful listening to sounds. And I do want to emphasize that, um, that when your mind wanders, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. And I like to emphasize this point because people often do feel like, oh, I'm not practicing now because my mind has wandered. I'm doing something wrong because my mind has wandered. Or, you know, um, I just can't do this because my mind wanders all the time. Mind wandering is part of the practice. We notice when our minds wander and then we gently bring them back. And as much as we can, letting go of any judgment of ourselves for our mind wandering. So thank you. I hope you feel a little bit more uh, calm or centered than you did when you first started this practice. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.